So, so my podcast, there, there is no rules. If you want to say the C word or the B word, yeah, no, same goes, word. man. You're so. Yeah. I, 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 I'll just, I'll just stay authentic. All right. Good cutting enhances the quality of good meat. Poor cutting results in an inferior piece of meat, regardless of quality. And then I just do my quick intro. What up, me heads? This is Travis American Butcher. Welcome to the Meat Block Podcast. Here, recording in the Pacific Northwest in beautiful, beautiful Washington. Today, I am joined by Paul. Paul, how do I pronounce your last name? Shaw. Shaw. That's sure. Like the seashore. Okay. I, I want to. I always ask that because I have a last name that always gets messed up. Stock okay. still. Stock still. Yeah, but people always want to add a D or a W, um, which isn't there. And and Paul, you uh, work for Vic, which is a – this is where, where I get confused. So there's Vic's and then there's Victor Churchill's. Correct, correct. So I apologize. I'm a funny talker all the way from Australia. And, yeah, we have the most – prestigious meat wholesaling business in Australia, servicing the top restaurants and pubs in Sydney and Melbourne, our two bigger cities, you know, LA and New York equivalent for all you uh, American people. And then Victor Churchill, which is our award-winning retail store, you know, described by Anthony Bourdain as the most beautiful retail shop on the planet. And one, the best retail store in the world, not just butcher shop, but the best retail store in the world in, in 2010. So everyone from Oprah to Jamie Oliver to our dear and, and sadly miss friend Anthony Bourdain have, have frequented it. And it's a, it's, it's, it's a really beautiful experience. But yeah, we are, we meet people and we're, we're proud of that. And, and we're very ethical meet people, Travis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you're you're in Sydney, correct. And but paint me a picture of Paul before the meat industry. What, did you grow up in Sydney? Sydney. I'm a Central Coast boy, so again, using a, a Californian analogy, it would be like living in Ventura uh, to LA. So. Okay. Coastal boy, grew up um, and for a long, long time worked in finance, worked for Ernst & Young, the, the big accounting firm, and then in the private equity industry before meeting Anthony Paharic, who's the, the, the founder and CEO of Vix Mead and, and a real pioneer in, in the industry, both, both here in Australia, but increasingly globally. And, you know, his book, Meet the Ultimate Companion, which is available for sale i believe in the us from from october and he's a he's an incredible human being and um you know uh, i i joined him a couple of years ago to take this business from what was already a wonderful success story to i suppose even bigger um opportunities particularly on the 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 retail side you know looking at what you guys are, are doing if you look at butchers botch in the in the u.s we're looking at doing a, a similar but fresh um concept here in australia over the coming months oh nice yeah, yeah but victor churchill's is i unfortunately have not traveled to australia um, you got to get out here man i know it's it's, it's not that close um, it's not that far either, buddy. Yeah, I do true. it twice a year. <laughs> I come to US at least twice a year, and I tell you, for particularly you, like you're in Seattle, man. It's thirteen yeah. hours. Thirteen hours. Thirteen hours. Just yeah. a good sleep, couple of you know Valium or or something, a couple of schooners, and you'll you'll sleep and you'll be here. But I, I, I I'm an ambient man myself, but <laughs> my toddler is. Is, is, a, is not <laughs> yeah. um, maybe travel the first time come on your yeah. own or with your lovely wife man yeah i think traveling the first time with a, a a little child is is problematic for anyone particularly the couple of a hundred other people on the plane yeah no i was on a plane with my son once and we it was a great flight and we landed in the i was like you did really good and he was like like a couple months old. And I was like, that wasn't bad talking to my wife. And the guy turned around in front of me and said, even a trash can gets a steak every once in a while. <laughs> like, thanks. 
dick. Like, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> like, <laughs> classic, uh, classic. But you were going to ask something about Victor Churchill. Yes, yes. That's it. wow. Thanks for keeping me on uh, track. My first introductory to Victor Churchill was seeing that Anthony Bourdain um, show. I think it was back on uh, No Reservations, mm. and just seeing how beautiful it was, and where he sits down with Anthony. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it was started, or not started, but Anthony's father uh, was a butcher and in the trade. And then he um, I got into it, I don't want to say accidentally, but I, I feel like if I'm remembering that his father wanted him to have other career goals. Yeah, no, you got a good memory, man. So, yeah, Vic, Vic who is the name on our building and and our boxes and our product is a fourth generation butcher croatian came to australia with nothing but the the shirt on his back and 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 a really amazing work ethic and had been a butcher for 25 years until anthony his his only son and one of three kids but only son um who he was adamant he was going to educate properly so that he didn't have to do what Vic did, which was work through the middle of the night in a cold box. And mm. so Anthony got a university education in business and finance and went off to work in merchant banking. And six months into that, came home and announced at the family dinner table that he wanted to work with his dad. And um, to the horror of, of both mum and dad, they... They they argued, um, you know, I don't know whether it was for many minutes, hours or, or months, but ultimately Anthony joined Vic who had opened a, a small little retail butcher shop in in a, a quirky little suburb of Sydney that at that point was almost uh, the epicenter of our gay community and by default our vegetarian community and you know they eked out a living there for a, a little while before they started supplying one of our first famous restaurants when Australia really didn't have a, a big hospitality industry and and it changed everything and that was back in 1998 and from there they moved into wholesaling and and grew from those very humble beginnings into one of the as i said before one of the most prestigious meat wholesaling companies in in the country and supplying every famous chef that we have and you know a a, a significant eight figure wholesaling business and 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 then in 2000 and just leading into the 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 global financial crisis after anthony had unsuccessfully tried to expand the business into China and Singapore, um, you know, not not because it didn't work over there, but because of how important he was to the business here in Australia. And he went to, to, to China to, to build that business and the Australian business really struggled. So he had to pull out of that and it, and it came at an enormous financial cost. And he wanted to rebuild his confidence in, you know, in his ability to make good decisions. And so... Uh, there was a, a butcher shop in uh, Wallara, which is a, a really prestigious Beverly Hills style suburb of Sydney. A butcher shop, the oldest uh, butcher shop in Australia, has been going since the 1800s, um, called sure. Churchill's. And so they took Anthony's dad's name, Victor, and the the existing name of the butcher shop, Churchill's, and they turned it into Victor Churchill and. Everyone said they were fucking crazy. It was the the start of the f global financial crisis. The discretionary income was only going to go one way. And um, ten years later, the the anniversary is literally this year. Um, that that shop is just a, a a wonderful success story that is talked about from everywhere, from New York to LA to Tokyo to obviously Sydney and Melbourne. And in fact, we're opening a, a the store in Melbourne. Um, not this year, but but in in about eight eight months time. Okay, awesome. Yeah, when I I, re I remember just seeing that and seeing uh, all that beautiful casework and just like it reminded me of like a candy store for adults. Yeah, it is. That's a good way of describing it. It's like you know Abercrombie and Fitch, mm -hmm. where it's not a clothing shop; it's a nightclub. 
Like yeah. Victor Churchill is a nightclub for food and we've hosted functions there and dinners there that you really do feel like you're in one of the most beautiful restaurants, come clubs in, in the world. Yeah, definitely. And and Darren is awesome. That's just a side note. But. <laughs> Darren, Darren, Darren O'Rourke, who yeah. for almost 10 years, so almost the, the, the complete history of Victor Churchill was, was the head butcher until very recently when we decided to, to poach him from the retail shop and come and join us at headquarters and be our, our education partner. But yeah, he's, he's an incredible human being. He's a, a chef by training and, and taught self-taught butcher, um, self-taught plus with the, the, um, the tuition of, of Victor also. So yeah, he, he, he's an incredible guy and does a lot of good for the, for the industry. He's a, a beautiful human being with three kids and a, as he will, part smugly and part ashamedly tell you that his wife's a vegetarian <laughs> and, which which is always interesting but he a uh, 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 respectful and he is respectful of of that decision also nice um it, t- talking about darren getting into it but i want to talk segue back into you uh paul what made you change from i guess white collar to getting into the culinary meat the meat world yeah i'm i'm more driven by business and brand that i am by food per se like i love the hospitality industry it's Mm -hmm. it's dynamic it's exciting it's dysfunctional it's antiquated but there's i i saw it there was there was there was a couple of things i I saw, I'd known the Vicks brand for almost 15 years from when I first met Anthony and Vic back when I was working at Ernst & Young and they were part of the Entrepreneur of the Year program that Ernst & Young sponsors globally and, and got exposure to them then. And and so, I got sick of, of white collar. Like I went through the global financial crises and working as a banker and it was just a roller coaster and I just wanted to do something different and I wanted to do something entrepreneurial and I didn't have that pure entrepreneurial DNA that it's that, that, that it takes to be a founder and so I just decided to have a short list of people that I would be willing to work for and they included the likes of Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk and, and Jeff Bezos and those kinds of iconic entrepreneurs. But on that list was Anthony Paharich, who's the CEO of Vixmead. And, you know, obviously the pathway to get an interview with him was a little easier than the other three that I mentioned. And, um, you know, we sat down and over the course of a year or so decided that we would work together and that I would help him for a, a year or so and see how that it panned out. And, and 18 months later, I'm uh, an intimate part of his business and I'm their chief commercial officer and, you know, along with hosting our podcast, Meet the Ultimate Podcast and, and doing a bunch of other things. It's it's a it's a wonderful industry that needs professionalizing and, and I'm really excited to be part of that process. Yeah. And then could you tell me uh, that, that the story of, of Meet the Ultimate, of uh, without giving too much away because we want to drive sales to it, but what could people find in the book? Yeah, it's, it's without doubt, it's not just another recipe book. It's not just another book about meat. It is without doubt the most comprehensive guide to farming, to cutting to cooking but it's also wonderfully philosophical and and ironically and it's perverse in many ways coming from a a business that makes money from selling meat is that the underlying philosophy that anthony talks about in his book is the importance of well there's three fundamental principles the first is eating less meat but eating better quality um the if we're going to kill an animal or take an animal's life so that we can get the nutrients and enjoy the pleasure of eating that meat that we owe it to that animal 
to actually eat every part of it and to find a use for it and not just to eat the cuts that we're familiar with. So to be open to eating curious or secondary cuts, to be open to using the bones for broths and different things. And I'm trying to think of the third one as I talk to you and it's it's eluding me. But they're, they're two of the most... The, important principles in in the book but yeah it's a it's a really beautiful book that well to to that thing about using all the different cuts there's a recipe in there for every different cut of the animal um which is super cool but it's also laced with with anthony's beautiful personality and his magnanimous view of this world and the 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 best way to do anything is the ethical way to do any the the ethical way to do something and and I think that's what most people get out of the book and it's been an without doubt a, an unwavering success here in Australia and and the feedback on it is beautiful and it's you know for those of you that that aren't Australian um, it's done in three different parts just the the classic which is the a really beautiful butcher it looks like the old butcher's apron, the the blue and gold butcher's apron. But then the two limited edition versions are actually bound in kangaroo skin. Um, so one of our big pushes is that, that eating native is a, a, a really amazing option both for the planet because they have zero carbon footprint because they run wild. Here in Australia, there's 60 million kangaroos running around. It's one of the most nutritional products or most, most nutritional meats there there is to eat. And because it's native to us, the bioavailability of it is is incredible. So the two limited edition ones, one's done in a traditional brown kangaroo skin, and then the the real limited edition one is in the green of the Victor Churchill store. So yeah, it's beautiful. It's a it's a piece of art and and I know Anthony's super proud of it and as as are we all proud of it. And I, I think people will get a bunch out of it. Awesome. And what, for American listeners, what does kangaroo taste like? Kangaroo, for comparison for you guys? Yeah. And you could say it, it tastes like nothing you've ever had. No, it's not. It's it, it. It is not dissimilar to beef. It's just uber lean because there's okay. such a, a a free range, and they're com- they're, they're com- completely pasture fed. They they live off whatever's available, but it's it's they're they're completely vegetarian. So it's a superfood that tastes a whole lot like beef. It's just a a, a little bit leaner, you know, per- perhaps more on the veal side or young beef side of beef. Yeah, but do you have to? Is it tougher because no. all the kangaroos I've seen are like have six packs and are like super buff. Yeah, it it definitely needs to be wet aged properly, you know, so okay. you wouldn't want to, yeah, it's a super important part and then obviously cook really well also. Um but you're probably right, Travis. It's 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 definitely not as succulent or or soft as a piece of um wagyu or or you know, long fed uh, grain fed uh, beef. And then my last question about kangaroo, just because I, I have this opportunity, yeah, of course, is, man. Uh, is is it more of a a brazing animal, or is it a? Well, I don't think it would be because it'd be so lean. Or do you cut steaks out of it? Is there yeah, like steaks. you get your mm. back straps and your loin? Okay, yeah, you, you are asking a banker, though. Remember that. So, like, I think your listeners need to go. That fucking Australian guy. Not only did he talk <laughs> funny, but he didn't have a clue what he was talking about when it comes oh. to cooking kangaroo. You tell them to reach out to me. If anyone's got a question on how to cook kangaroo properly, send an email to you via and, and then to me, and I'll get one of our amazing chefs to give them the best advice in the world. Okay, awesome. And then to also promote what you're doing, what is the uh, audio side? Uh, what is your your podcast, uh, uh, Meet the Ultimate? podcast yeah it, it it was literally we found it at, at the same time and off the back of of the book launch in in november last year for a number of reasons we wanted to have a completely agnostic platform for people to hear stories from some of the most incredible chefs in the world some of the most 
incredible producers and farmers in the world, but also medical practitioners both on both sides of the ledger, those that are for meat, those for or against it. Um, technology, what's happening in the technology side of meat, what's happening on the political side of meat. Um, you know, the, the, the episode we recorded last week was with a, a meditation teacher because we've just rolled out a program here at, at Vic's because at the end of the day, we're all about, we believe we're the healthy butcher. You know, we want mm-hmm. people that are, eat our meat to be healthy. We want our people to be healthy. What you were talking about with me offline before about the, the industry's hard. People that work in abattoirs, it's challenging. People that work in our facility during the night, it's challenging. And so we wanted to to gift them with uh, a tool which is scientifically proven to help with stress and to help with, with addiction and help with all sorts of other anxieties and things. So we, we introduced a, a pilot program of teaching meditation to some of our people. And so we had the guy that, that, that um, ran that program for us on the, the podcast. So it's a super wide range of, of people from within the industry and people from outside the industry, but all with a meat bent. Nice. That, that's awesome. I listen to it. Also, there will be links in the show notes and I will, uh, blow it up on on social medias as well. Awesome, man. I love it and appreciate it. And yeah, I think no doubt your loyal following on the on the meat block would would resonate with a lot of the the people we have on. Um they just they'll get used to the funny talkers. (laughs) I like it. I I had this fear of uh of it, it's weird like when i was like a little kid uh my parents introduced me like had a friend who um just had a, a european accent and they told me about it beforehand and the when i first met him i just giggled like a kid in church and i just had this total fear of when we we're going to talk for some reason that would happen again <laughs> i don't know why yeah maybe i've been americanized you know i <laughs> I, I spend a i spend a vast amount of time in america i love america I, I love certain pockets of america i love new york i love california i love colorado i love washington state and portland and um i've I've had the good fortune of spending a lot of time in all of those places yeah next time you come to washington let me know we're I live, coming man we're coming yeah I, I live on the water we could literally launch a boat get the freshest seafood you could imagine i get on average, like 60 Dungeness crabs a week. Wow, super cool. I'll come in and summer because it looks way too wet for me in winter. I went. I actually went through Seattle on the way to, um, what's the little island, the, like the 52nd state or whatever it's called? Um, oh, Hawaii. No, no, not Hawaii, 51. What's the other one? Oh, oh Puerto Rico? No, 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 the, the wet one where there's snow off, the, off oh. Canada. Alaska? Alaska. I was going to was Alaska. Like- I was like, that's not an island. That's- <laughs> yeah, because doesn't Alaska get caught in those things? The, the, yeah. It gets caught. In, yeah, it's kind of part of it, but it's not really. And no, I was on the way to Alaska and I, I, I had a stopover in, in Seattle and it was in January and it was fucking oh, yeah. cold and wet, man. Yeah. Well, we call Alaska and Hawaii the freak states. The, um, yeah, they're beautiful, man. Both of them. <laughs> um, you. Also, listeners, I know Puerto Rico is not a state, but it should be. All right. Yeah, Puerto Rico is <laughs> cool too. Yeah. Um, and then I always ask guests, what is your favorite dish, preferably meat based, and why? Yeah, that's again, that's super easy for me. Like a, a meal for me of a beautiful piece of pasture fed, pasture finish, scotch fillet. Um, either pan fried or or barbecued with just some some greens is and a and a nice glass of red wine is the the ultimate dish that I could eat every day of my life. Nice, yeah, sounds great. Simple, five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. This oh, here, I, I'm not a cook, but this is what my guys taught me. And Travis, you can dispute this or otherwise. Um, if you want the perfect medium rare steak. You've got to let it sit at room temperature, um, so Mm -hmm. not straight out of the fridge, and then on a super hot um, grill or fry pan, three minutes, 
turn it for three minutes and you should have a bit of salt on it also and then let it sit for three minutes and it will be perfect every single time. Nice. Yeah. And was your was this your favorite meal or dish before you started working for Vix or did yeah. this evolve because okay. Yeah. No, I wasn't a vegetarian that came here and yeah. then just started drinking the Kool-Aid, you know, it was I've always been you know, you know, working in banking, you get you get the good fortune of eating at a lot of great restaurants too. So I, yeah. I had the good fortune of eating many much of our product before I actually worked here. So um it was definitely um, Australians and meat and barbecues and things. It's 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 part of a way, our way of life. Nice, that's awesome. And then, um, anything else you'd like to plug at the end here, or anything that we we didn't discuss that you just want to want to get out there? Yeah, no, I'm not, I I don't need to plug anything. You know, it's it's kind of like we we've spoken about Anthony's book, which is a a great read, and I am pretty sure it's coming out in October if it's it, it's not already there. But yeah, I just think this cross fertilization of what you're doing on your podcast and what we're doing on our podcast is the the only thing that I want to plug a bit because it's all just about counteracting some of this hysteria that's happening on the the flip side of meat at the moment with all this alternative proteins and you know i it it just feels almost cryptocurrency like in in its madness and it's not founded on anything real and you know our whole thing for people is just to to go back to nature's way which is eating real food grown sustainably and everything in moderation um and that if you think you're going to solve the world's problems including your own health by eating heavily processed plant-based or or cell-based meat then then you need to listen to a whole lot more and research a whole lot more that's the the only message i want to plug travis okay Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for for being on the show. And also thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, no problems, so. man. I look forward to sharing both. And um, I know it's Sunday night there, man. You've you've probably got a, a an early start and a big week ahead. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for having me on, man. It's been a real pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, yeah, I, I think we could cut it there. But thank you so much again. Honestly. 